Welcome back to my channel. You know, I've been playing guitar for quite some time now. Approximately 15 years, four of which were spent pursuing a music degree from St. Francis Xavier University. Throughout these years, I've learned a fair amount. And I wouldn't say that I'm content with my current level of guitar playing, because the minute you become content is the minute you stop improving. But that's a different video. This video will be a little bit more serious than other videos I've made, because I'm gonna be sharing with you some tips that I wish someone had told me when I first started out in my guitar playing journey. How lucky are you that I'm taking time out of my busy life to help you with your guitar playing? God, I'm such a great person. I say this is uncommon advice because I've watched a few different videos on YouTube in this format. And while some of what I'm gonna say in this video overlaps with what other guitar instructors have said, I have a lot of points that I'd like to make that just don't seem to be talked about. And make sure you watch to the end of this video as well. Otherwise, I'm gonna be canceling melons. That's right, all types of melons. All right, enough fucking introduction bullshit. Here are the 18 tips I would give myself if I could go back in time. The first few tips are pretty basic, but also insanely important. Tip number one is to be relaxed when you play. Stop! You know how you feel right now? As you're watching this video, you're relaxed. When you're actually practicing, you should feel no different. And I emphasize this because I see a lot of my students making this mistake all the time. They tense up while they're practicing. You should feel zero stress in your body aside from your fingers and a small portion of your wrists. That means that you should not be tense in your forearm, the rest of your arm, your shoulders, your traps, your neck, and your stomach. Specifically pay attention to those areas because those are the areas that will tense up when you're practicing. And the way that you practice is the way you perform. So if you're practicing all stressed out and tense, that's how you're gonna perform. It really wasn't until the last four or five years that I became aware of this mistake when I was practicing. So if I could have told my younger self this information, the benefits would have been crazy. By the way, use that wrist of yours to fuck up that like button but make sure you don't get tense in the process. Tip number two is to get familiar with the metronome. I used to practice songs using Guitar Pro all the time. I was also in my middle school and high school jazz bands. So I was at least playing with something, whether that was an online program or an actual ensemble. But when it comes down to really playing in the pocket and refining your time, the metronome is king. It forces you to get familiar with rhythm and understand subdivisions. And at the end of the day, when you think about it, all the music that you've ever listened to was recorded along with a click track. So your ability to play with a metronome really is one of those defining things that separate an amateur from a pro. I talk a lot about this in my sales video where I outline the four elements that make up a great musician as well as the one secret that separates a pro from a beginner. Spoiler, it's a metronome. But if you want to watch that video, there's a link in the description. If you're interested in signing up for my 52-week guitar player program, you can book a call with me one-on-one -on -one when that video ends. But don't call me if you're poor. The third tip that I would tell myself is to learn the notes of the fretboard and prioritize that shit. You're always gonna struggle to improvise if you find yourself looking for notes when you're trying to solo. I could always name the notes on the fretboard, but I never specifically created something to help me learn them fast. So I tell my younger self to do that so I don't freeze up during solo improvisations. Kind of like how a laptop freezes when it's attempting to give a damn. This fourth tip is huge, and it's playing with a legato tone. I've talked about this in many videos because it's hella important. I played with two staccato of a tone for many years. And it's not that there's anything wrong with playing with a staccato tone, it's just that most people play like that because they're incapable of having a legato tone, which is why it's important to learn it. The term legato literally translates to smooth and connected, which sounds a hell of a lot better than staccato. 
in most situations. And there is a time and place to sound staccato, but for the most part, you want to sound legato. Correcting this mistake took me a lot of months because I was literally playing with a staccato tone for years without even being aware of it. Check out this clip from an older video where I demonstrated the differences very clearly. Staccato sounds like an ass. Tip five is identification of your goal. I'd ask myself what I wanted and I would be really specific about it. It's not enough to just say that you wanna be better. Everyone wants to be fucking better, mate. You have to actually pinpoint where it is that you wanna go so you know what you're working toward. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any structure in your practicing. Most people live their entire lives not knowing what they want or wanting too many things. And then they achieve jack shit as a result. Pick a goal and take ruthless action until you achieve it or give up like a little bitch. I know for myself at least that I refuse to give up on things. The reason people give up is because something is too hard for them or they're too stupid to have what it takes. Both of those are humiliating as fuck to me, which is why I just keep crushing goal after goal that I have. Tip number six is consistency. You gotta keep showing up. So I would tell myself to be more consistent. This wasn't a problem for me when I was in music school, but when I was younger, I would wanna do other things like play video games and hang out with friends like some sort of psychopath. Make time to practice and be consistent because consistency is the fastest way to improve. I hate it when people tell me that they wanna improve quickly, but they aren't consistent because the way that they think is just completely broken. Those are the more important tips that I would give myself. Tip number seven is to copy who you wanna sound like. When I was in university, my professors told me to transcribe the solos of the greats. I ignored them at first, but I started doing it eventually, and when I did, I realized that this was a universal lesson that could be applied to any skill set. The people that are great are great for a reason. So you need to figure out what it is that makes them great and then learn how to do it for yourself. Once you understand that, you can take the information and put your own spin on it. That's how you make it original. It's kind of annoying to me when people say that I copy Davey 504 too much. It pisses me off, but I'm not even mad. Because yes, I do model some of what he does, but he models some of what PewDiePie does. Basically, my point being is if you want to sound like Slash, learn his solos and tendencies. If you want to play like Steve Vai, learn his solos and tendencies. If you're an idiot and want to sound like me, then learn my shit. Wait a minute. Who the fuck is that guy? Tip eight, accuracy before speed. People tend to obsess over playing fast, which is a very immature way to approach playing the guitar. Playing fast is cool, but it's not really that important compared to other things. In fact, I would actually say that playing fast is only 12% important. I would tell myself to get the rhythms right first at a slower tempo and then refine them until I could eventually play them at the original tempo. You need to be able to hear the rhythms in your head, and when you can, the speed will come. Tip nine is getting that extra 10%. Many of my students make this mistake and I used to be guilty of this mistake as well. When most people learn a song, they can play it pretty decently, usually about 80 to 90% as well as the original. When you realize that barely anyone goes for that extra 20 or 10% to get it perfect, that should be your motivation to do it yourself. That's just another difference between an intermediate level player and a pro player. And don't get me wrong, Getting that extra 10% is tough. So don't be a pussy and put in the work. Ah, so tip number 10. Hmm, this is hard. Are there any tricks or tips that you have so I can play this better? No, there's no fucking tricks. It's called practice, you fucking idiot. People are constantly asking me for tips, tricks, or shortcuts to get better. And most of the time, all I can tell them to do is practice. Of course, there are some specific techniques that will make playing something easier and I will point that out to them. But if you're trying to play an F bar chord and you're asking me if there are any tricks or tips to make it easier, the answer is no. Just keep practicing it until you have it. Imagine having a special event or something one week from today and then asking if there are any tips or tricks or shortcuts that you could do to make that day come sooner. It's the same shit here. And you know what? Yeah, there is a solution. 
Get drunk off your ass for seven days in a row so the time flies by. There you go, asshole. Problem solved. Next question, pussy. Don't subscribe to my channel. Tip 11, mess up in front of people. If you get used to messing up in front of people, the anxiety associated with playing in front of a crowd is gonna disappear. This way you won't get nervous. And the only way to get over your fear of playing in front of others is to actually do it. I would emphasize this to myself because I've had really bad stage fright in the past and still do in some situations. When I was in university, I should have got up to play in front of my fellow musicians more than I did and not been so much of a bitch about it. Looking back on those days, it wouldn't have mattered if I looked like an idiot now. It would have helped me in the long run. That's why I'm not afraid to look like an idiot now in front of you motherfuckers online. I've learned my lesson. Life is short, kids. The rest of the tips in this video are general pieces of advice that I would give to the masses as opposed to just myself. I see my students making these mistakes all the time. Tip 12. Playing songs is not gonna make you a better musician. It's gonna make you a better entertainer. Musicians know their instrument really well, and they know how music works. Learning songs can help make sense of some things, but that alone is not gonna be enough to actually make you a better musician. Guitar collection reveal at 250,000 subscribers. There's a difference between playing and actually practicing. I'm kind of surprised that I have to point this one out, but if you're sitting with your guitar and you're playing things that you already know and you're noodling, then you're not practicing. When you practice, you should have an objective in mind and be actively working on making it better. Tip 14 is learn the entire song. Don't just learn a part of it. Learning the entire song will increase your attention span and will make you a more complete player. This quality is extremely common in noobs. Get off the goddamn cigarettes and put in some work. When you jam with others, you're exposing the gaps in your playing. You'll realize how much you don't know by doing this. Then you'll cry like a pussy bitch, and I'll laugh. Ha ha! That's what you get for jerking off instead of practicing. Maybe you'll have better luck with the triangle. Tip 16. Be aware that it's gonna take you longer than you think to play what it is you're trying to play. It's really common for guitar players to try something that they want to learn, realize it's hard, and then give up. And I mean, yeah, sure, you can do that, but you'll be much more fulfilled if you actually see it through to the end. Just understand that things take a long time to get, especially when you're in the beginning. But the good news is growth is exponential, and once you go through the process a few times, you'll learn things much quicker than you did before. It's fucking science, mate. Tip 17 is theory is not as hard as you think. Jesus Christ, don't be such a pussy when it comes to theory. It's really not that hard. I don't know why people run like hell from it, and there are so many memes on the internet saying how scary it is. You wanna learn theory so you can know the rules, because you first have to know what the rules are before you can break them. Fuck up that like button. Tip 18 is to track your progress. Athletes track their stats. Business owners track their numbers. Piano players track their cats. So why wouldn't you track your progress? You could do this by filming yourself, but if you didn't want to go that far, you could go out, just get a notebook and stay consistent with your practicing and measure the BPM of whatever exercise you're working on. Songs aren't really a good thing to track because you can either play it or you can't. An example of something worth tracking would be how well you can play the major seventh arpeggios in every single key and at what BPM. It's gotta be Pacific. And that's gonna bring us to our last tip. Tip 19, and this is pretty important, think critically. Okay, for some reason, no one does this. When you find yourself in a situation where you're stuck, actually make an effort to try to figure it out. 80% of the time, you just need to practice more. But you need to make this conscious effort to try and figure out what it is that you're trying to do before you ask someone or quit. Because remember, the questions you ask will reflect the level at which you play. It just seems that people have lost their ability to think critically. And that will conclude this video. If you want to learn more from me and check out my 52-week guitar player program, then go to the link in the description and book that video call. But don't do it if you're poor, damn it! Time is money. This was a more serious video than the type of videos that I normally make, so make sure you fuck up that like button extra hard if you liked it. Guitar Chefs, we're on a mission to hit 1 million subscribers by September of 2022. We're going to the top. Guitar Collection reveal at 250,000 subscribers. But don't subscribe to my channel. In fact, you know what? Just... Just leave, okay? I don't want you here.